Knowing how to build with user profiles is essential for most of the projects you'll work on. In a previous video, we covered setting up user profiles and some basic examples of how to build with them. But in this video, we'll take things a bit further by looking at things like user onboarding, how to secure user data with row owners, and how to set up public profiles. We'll look at filtering using user data, reporting with user data, and then storing temporary values in the user profile table. Now, when you add users to your project, you may be filling out their user profiles for them with all of their information. But if you have lots of users or if your user profiles have lots of columns, you may want them to fill out that themselves. And this is where you need to think a little bit about onboarding. The easiest option is to just point your users to their user profile page where they can fill out that information. You can simply add editable fields here to let them do this. There's also an action to navigate the user to their user profile screen. But another option is to create a dedicated onboarding screen that users will only see when they first sign in to the app and then hide all other screens until they've filled out their profile. This is a very typical first run experience in most types of software. So let's look at how we do this in Glide. The first step is to create a new property in the user profile table, which will act as a kind of check mark to show that this person has completed their profile. This could be a checkbox, but it would also be useful to know what date they completed their profile on. So we'll use a date column for this. This will then become part of a visibility condition in our app. If there's a date here, it will mean that their profile is complete. Next, we'll create a new screen based on the users table. We'll remove the collection and add some simple welcome text. Now we can add editable fields for all the user profile properties that we want them to fill out. But if we open up the data panel here, we can see that something's not quite right. We're currently logged in as Hugo, but the current context for the screen and the data that we're seeing here is Alma. No matter who we switch to, we're always going to be seeing and therefore editing the top row of the users table. So we need to ensure that each user edits only their own profile information. To address this, we can apply a filter to the screen's data. We'll set up the filter so that it matches the user email column with the email of the current user profile. Now, as we switch between users, we can see each user is editing only their own row, their profile. You can also do this with row owners, but we'll cover the details about this in the next section. Now we have this screen set up, we need to make sure that this is the only screen that new users see, and that unless they've completed their profile, all other screens will be hidden. To do this, we'll set the visibility condition for this screen to show only when the onboarding property we just created is empty. We'll then do the opposite for all other screens in our app. Next, we'll add a button called Complete Profile. And we want this button to do two things, so we'll need to create a custom action. The first is to put the current date time into the user profile completed column. And then the second is to send the user to the home screen. We'll do this first with a set column values action that sends the current date time to the user profile completed column in the user profile. And then we'll add a go to tab action to send the user to the home screen. The data that you collect in your user profiles table may be sensitive data that you don't want other users to access. Even if users can't see each other's profiles in your project, that data might still be downloaded and accessible through web inspection tools. To avoid this, you can use row owners. Row owners is a feature that restricts access to each row to a specific row owner. In the users table, the simplest way to do this is to select the email column for the user and make this a row owner. Now Glide will only download that row for that user. But the problem with this is that sometimes you want to show some of your user profile data while protecting other parts. For example, if you have a social security number or salary in your user profiles table, that's information that you definitely don't want downloaded to your project. But maybe you also want to show all users a directory of all other users and provide their phone number and emails. If you use row owners and try to show your users table in a collection, each user will only see their own row in that collection because they are only allowed to download their own row. So the solution to this is to create a secondary table that will hold just the public information for each user and then link the two using relations. Step one is to create the second table and copy in any existing user IDs. Step two is to create a relation from the public profiles to the original user profiles table. Step three is to add any columns that you want to be publicly available in this table and then copy across any existing data from existing users. For us, we're going to have the name, the image, the title, and their bio. 
Step four is to make the original user profile table row owned using the email column, and then the public user profile table non row owned. We can just leave this as is. Step five is to make an onboarding screen, just as we did before, based on the user profiles table. This time though, because we're using row owners, we don't need to filter this screen. Users will only be able to see their row. Now, as a user fills out this screen, they'll be filling out their private user profile data. But we can add a modification to the complete profile action that copies across any public values to the public profiles table. So step six is to add a new action in our compound action here that will add a new row to the public profiles with their row ID and then the name, image, title, and biography values. Now, when a user completes onboarding, they'll fill out their row in the user profiles table and then the action will populate a new row with these values in the public profiles list. Now we can build screens that show that public data. In this applicant manager, we have applicants with different levels of seniority. In our users table, we have different users and we want to restrict or customize what they see. For example, we want the CEO to only see the senior candidates, the junior person to see the junior candidates, and we want the middle manager to see both of these. To do this, we'll create a column in the user profile for seniority level. And for the middle manager, we'll include both senior and junior. Now in our app, we can filter this collection based on the current user profile information. We'll set up a filter on the list to show items where the candidate level is included in the current user profiles level column. Now our users see only what they need. The user profiles table can also be used for reporting. In this project, we've changed the user profiles table to represent our app's sales reps, and we have a query column and rollups that pull in all of their sales for this year. Then in our project, we can show a chart that shows the data in that table. A slightly more advanced technique that uses user profiles is to store temporary data in the user profile that you might not have access to elsewhere, and then you can just remove it later. In this customer portal, users can create an order, go into that order, browse a list of products, look at the details screen for each of those products, and then add it to the order that they'd created. Now, this doesn't seem remarkable at first, but it relies on passing a temporary value to the user's table. So let's break down what's happening. When an order is created, this creates a new row in the orders table. Then when someone navigates to that order screen, the current context for that window is that order, that row in the table that we just created. On this new screen, we're showing a list of all the products that they can choose from. But instead of just clicking one and adding it to the current order via an action, we allow them to navigate into the detail screen of that item. And at this point, Glide doesn't know the context of the order that we were just in because we've lost the context of the row that we were on. So this is where we need to store a temporary value in the user profile table. So on this collection here, if we look in the actual action section of this collection, we've got a custom action on the item click, which logs the order item that we're clicking on to the user profile. If we look here, we've got show details screen, but above that we've got set column values and we're sending just one value to the user profile table. It's that temporary column. We're sending the row ID of the order that we're clicking on to the user profile. Now, if we go into one of these orders here and then we click on one of the items that we're presented with to choose to add to our order, we can then look inside of this button which adds the item to the order. This is also a custom action. And if we open it up here, we'll see that what we're using, well, we're using many things, but the most important one here is this add row action. If we open this up, we're adding a row to the order line items. And critically, the order ID that we're adding is being brought from that temporary column. After we add it, of course, in this custom action, we're going to be clearing that column. So that was a deep dive into user profiles. We looked at onboarding users, the use of row owners to secure user profile data, and then showing some of that data in a public profile. We looked at filtering with user data, reporting in the user profiles table, and storing temporary values in the user profile table to use in different ways.